Here's Nancy Wolga. Well, uh, I mean, here's Nancy Wal. Oh, here's Nancy Demos Walgamuth. Wal- 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 Here, here's Nancy. Here's Mancy Demos Waffle Mouth. Oh, that is definitely not it. Well, Nancy Demos Wal. Wal- she says God never gets confused. Hey, did you think I forgot that this is the weekend program? I did not. And yes, I do know how to pronounce that name most of the time. <laughs> Welcome to Revive Our Hearts Weekend. I'm Dana Gresh. Last week, we talked about the freedom that we have in Christ. And next week, we'll talk about the fruitfulness He blesses us with. And that leaves us with the topic of experiencing fullness. Let's dive in. In a few moments, Nancy Damas Walgamuth will share how we can have fullness of joy in Christ. But before we listen to that, our team compiled some of the funny moments that we've recorded over the years here at Revive Our Hearts. Because, hey, it's for your enjoyment. Now, I think we're going to have some good laughs, and you know it's no fun to giggle by myself. So Aaron Davis is here in the studio with me. Aaron, are you ready to laugh? I'm here. I got my giggle box all warmed up. Let's laugh. <laughs> now, you, hey, yours is warmed up too. Mine is warmed up. Yes. <laughs> now you've probably heard Aaron on Revive Our Hearts, the daily program, and this weekend program. Of course, we're both co-hosts on the Grounded Video Cast. So, Aaron, you're pretty familiar with Revive Our Hearts, right? Pretty familiar. Yes. <laughs> okay. I want to know if you have a funny memory of Nancy or one of her recordings. Oh no, that a uh, funny memory of Nancy. I, I this is what comes to mind. I don't know how funny it is, but I was recording in the Reviver Heart Studio a series for the Deep Well and Nancy was kind of my hair and makeup person. So she would come <laughs> in the bathroom with me and she would like smooth my flyaways and adjust me and it felt kind of surreal. That Nancy Nancy was my <laughs> Nancy. Nancy was my behind the scenes yeah. person. But she was so gracious, and I was so grateful she was there. Oh, she's such a good behind the scenes helper. You know what I think about. I don't know why this is coming to mind, but once I got a very cheerful text from Nancy at four a.m. Okay, she did not realize she was in a different time zone. I mean, she <laughs> she did realize she was in a different time zone. She just didn't think about it, and she really wanted me to respond back to her. So we had a conversation at four a.m., and she didn't figure out for two days that I had she had waken <laughs> me in the middle of the night. You didn't <laughs> tell her. I didn't until I got to South Africa where she was waiting for me and said, by the way, it was 4 a.m. You must have faked it. I don't know why we do that. When people call and say, were you asleep? We always say, no, I was wide awake. No, we don't say that. We go, no, I was was, was just (laughs) waiting for your call. (laughs) We sound like we were asleep. Okay, well, let's get started with this audio that the team found. What do we have first? Well, we already heard you completely butcher Nancy's name. Well, let me clarify. That one... It was actually scripted, and I mm. sounded like I was reading it. <laughs> I don't. I think liked I've the ever, waffle pants. Yeah, or the whatever. waffle, whatever it was. <laughs> I don't think I've ever butchered it that badly, but I have messed it up plenty. I mean, Walgamuth, who has a name like that? It's tough. I, part of my role at Reviver Hearts is serving on the content team, and I tell you, it keeps us up at night. Did we misspell Nancy Damas Walgamuth? <laughs> and here's a little insider scoop. When I'm editing, I actually Google my boss Nancy's name, just to make sure, because the more you look at it, the more it looks like you might not have it right. So I be Googling Wolgamuth all the time. That's funny. Well, Dana, I actually have a clip of you saying it wrong for real. (laughs) Do I want to hear this? I don't know, but we're going to. This is Revive Our Hearts with Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth has been showing us Revive Our Hearts with Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth says true. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth says true. Revive Revive Our Hearts is also a mouthful. Revive Our Hearts, Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Could we add something else in there that makes it complicated? Wolgamuth. Wolgamuth. With Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth Hearts. With Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. With Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. Wolgamuth. I thought it was wool for a long time, so I'm learning wall. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth is really a mouthful. (laughs) I'm so glad she got rid of Lee. (laughs) Wolgamuth. Wolgamuth. Wolgamuth, Wolgamuth, Wolgamuth. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. I still feel like, am I saying Wal? I feel like I'm going Wolgamuth, Wolgamuth. 
Wagamuth, Wagamuth. Wagamuth. Yeah, I've only said it 5,000 times yesterday. You'll want to be sure to get a copy of Roger. Roger. Roger Walbermuth's. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that was like a remix. Like you were at your DJ station, like, Wagamuth, 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 Wagamuth. I liked it. Uh, I, I liked think Roger probably liked it too. Roger probably did. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, here are some moments over the years that didn't make it onto the air. Some funny mistakes I made and funny things Nancy said. You'll hear Bob Lapine and Julie Slattery in there, too. I could borrow your iPhone. Yeah. <laughs> you say it the same way on an iPhone as you do on another phone? Um, yeah, you do. <laughs> but there's just a little more coolness in your voice. Oh, okay. Uh-huh. My voice is already cool, right? Yes, it is. <laughs> I- I'm not prone to extreme emotional maturity, but I have my moments. What? You've never tasted coffee. So, Nancy, you just told me something I didn't know about you. You've Hang on a never. Uh, I'm sorry. We've... Okay. Uh, something not right. <laughs> something is not right if this woman has never tasted coffee. And, Dana, there's a group of listeners who make this happen in a special way, and we call them our monthly partner team. I've often called this team the lifeblood of our ministry. That's because they are. (laughs) You're 15 years older than you were. (laughs) So you want me to sound young? No. I can do that. I can do that with Pitchford. You see, I've never had road rage before or since then. I'm going to have some right now. Some road rage. There's a road out there. It's very loud. Diana, that reminds me of something else. It's no secret that as technology progresses, our recording processes have changed a bit. And most of the time these days, when you hear us talking with someone, we're probably not in the same room together. Yeah, exactly. Like right now, you're in Missouri. I'm in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. It's true. And we're hearing each other over a video call. Most of the time, that works pretty well. I'm sure it does save on travel costs, but sometimes it has its own issues, like this one from a recording of the Deep Well podcast. I think every woman can probably relate. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting. Oh, Go ahead. No, you go, Judy. You go. go. (laughs) Yeah, I think something that I... (laughs) <laughs> okay, Stacy, you go. <laughs> Sorry. No, nope, you go, Judy. Look, I'm like this. <laughs> I'll go. <laughs> yeah, there can be some insanity, and that leads to another post-COVID challenge, recording at home. Mm-hmm. You know, that we recorded the grounded video cast at home, sometimes by ourselves, with everything contained in our home, including dogs. World events don't. Moose! I don't know what. Hey. Moosey. Oh, my ears. I just pulled one of them out. Moosey, come here. Moosey, Moosey. Moo, moo. Moo. Come here, buddy. Moose. Moose, moose, moose. Sit down. You're being very bad today. Go under there. It's called When Words Matter Most. Dana, you got to have some gracious words for your puppy, Moosey, because I hear him barking. I'm so, so sorry. Uh, so here's the thing. Let's not call him bad dog. Here's the <laughs> thing. Dana Gresh is getting on an airplane. The second I get finished with this, and there's Moosey a suitcase knows. out there, and Moose is in mourning, and you all get oh, to participate in his well. sadness today. I'm sorry. <laughs> Go give him some wise, hope-filled words. While we and here is our oh. dear Aaron to drive that point And on. my puppy, Moses, who was being so good until it was time for me to be on, and now he's barking. He's he has decided, He's to, decided join the party. to join the grounded chorus. So just ignore his barking. We're just going to roll with what happens. So okay. I tracked down another co host. Hang on just a second. <laughs> Here she is. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, it, that is the cutest. Look who. Come here, Moisey. Oh, the here. puppy who doesn't want to be separated from her mom. Oh, you got Moosey. He just snuck in. He broke through the door. Oh, I had it shut. <laughs> I think it's gone to the dogs, y'all. It's gone to the dogs. Portia, I'm going to toss it to you. Oh, and your dog. Amen. <laughs> I think he was amening. <laughs> he, clearly, clearly. Now, he was quiet the whole time and got to the end and just wanted to let he out of the park. Yeah, he wanted to participate. <laughs> <laughs> that was just Monday. <laughs> we sound like crazy women, Aaron. 
What, 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 something <laughs> about when the dogs come out, you and I both have a special voice for we that. We do. start we talking have... like dish. That's right. We grit our teeth. <laughs> okay, I don't know if you're ready for this one. Really? You're going to hear a side of Nancy that you probably didn't know existed. Well, I have seen her behind the scenes a few times, but now I'm curious. Let's listen to it. Okay, this was almost 10 years ago when Mary Cassian and Nancy filmed the videos to go with the True Woman 201 study. And they did it at a different studio in town, not our offices. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're about to hear some dirt. I can't wait to hear it. Yep, here we go. We may need a fly swatter. There's a fly (laughs) buzzing around. If one of us swallows it, are we allowed to stop? (laughs) Yeah, that fly needs to go. Nancy killed the fly. We got it on There's video. Another one. There's another one. She killed it. Look. <laughs> the great fly killer. Seven in one blow. I can't believe you got that with your bare hand. Oh. There's another one. I just don't want fly guts on me. Oh. <laughs> We're one for zero. <laughs> well, I did hit him. I would have killed him. I just didn't hit him hard enough. <laughs> there are no flies on us. There may be flies on some of you guys, but there ain't no flies on us. We can't sing that here. I know, we can't sing. There are flies all over the place. <laughs> we need to write a new campfire song. We need to write a new campfire song. Mary, it was so... There's a fly. Get it. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> Come on, they fly. I dare timing. you. I dare you. <laughs> okay. All right. It can be the littlest thing that really... I was just going to get that guy. I was going to let you finish your sentence, and I was going (laughs) to... We're collecting carcasses. How many have we got now? (laughs) I told you what I want is, like, to start a a viral video and just have you grab one and eat it. (laughs) It's good protein. (laughs) If I got one of my hands, I just might do that. <laughs> anyway, go on. Okay. Um, I can hardly believe that we are already on element number eight. Or that there's a fly on you. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. <laughs> Missed. I hope we didn't mess with my makeup. Okay, now, do you care, Paula, that her now blast has gotten off center? Yeah, right. Go I just, I've got to give up this aggressive tendencies. <laughs> <These flies. laughs> this flies. There is a go. fly One. that has come back to life. Right there. There. Oh, see? Resurrection. <laughs> Did you get that on video? <laughs> we threw it in there dead, and now it's alive. Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth, the fly killer. <laughs> I guess that's how it started introducing her, huh? Sounds good to me. Well, yeah. Aaron, do you think you can top that one? Well, I don't know that I can top the fly killing, but I'm going to read you something. and isn't actually an audio clip. I'm just going to read you some lists. Okay. They were written for the 10th anniversary celebration of Revive Our Hearts and shared with our staff. Let me warn you, don't take these too seriously. Yeah, I think I figured out that I shouldn't take anything too seriously today. Okay, so these are top 10 lists about things that Revive Our Hearts and Nancy won't do. Okay, Dana, are you ready for the top 10 resources Revive Our Hearts should never create? Yeah, I want to hear them. Number 10. Choosing bitterness, a pathway to bondage. <laughs> Nobody Probably should create that. No. Mm-hmm. How about number six, the 30-day husband makeover? Why do you think that one's not <laughs> such a good idea? <laughs> I think that one would sell. Here's it the problem. Sell. <laughs> it would sell, but we want God to make over women's That's hearts. Exactly uh, right. Yeah. yeah. How about number four? A dating service called connectourhearts.com. <laughs> <laughs> Number two, I can see this in a in a hospital near you, a revive our hearts defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, you've been you've been laughing all along, but number one is next level. Uh, the number one resource we should never create is a Nancy bobblehead doll. <laughs> I actually would like to see that. I would too. Uh-huh. I could kind of 
Do you think they make any one-offs of those things? I don't know. We could get a limited edition. All right. How about this? Top 10 books that Nancy will not be writing. Number 10, Dog Training, The Complete Manual. That'll be me. Yeah, that'll be you. Uh, a little tidbit, Nancy's not Nancy's not the dog lover that Dana and I am. No. Number four, I can never imagine Nancy saying this or writing it, Living Without Electricity and Loving It. Homesteading, the Revive Our Hearts way. That's right. <laughs> Number two, this could be a hit, Jazzercise with Nancy. <laughs> Uh, Probably not coming to a Christian bookstore near you, but... I really do want to see the jazzercise. I do, too. I keep picturing the cover of that book, aren't you? Yeah. All right, you ready for one more list, Dana? Mm-hmm. Top 10 radio series you'll never hear from oh. Reviver Hearts. All right, number 10. This is a no-brainer. 10 ways to avoid your husband's authority. If Dana, if we ever record that series, they need to pull the plug. <laughs> it's not, not yes. good. <laughs> number eight, just believe... Just believe. It sounds a little Christmassy. Yeah. I could see one of those little Christmassy little signs. Yeah. Mm-mm. Number two, go skydiving with Nancy. Oh, now that, I like really the Jazzercise video and that, I just want to see the pictures. I think we could do a combination there. I think we could Jazzercise <laughs> from the plane and then we could skydive <laughs> and then we could homestead and then Jesus would come back. We're going to need her 1990s hair for the Jazzercise. You're so right. Yeah. Yeah. fun. Why haven't we done mm. this before? Because we may lose our jobs, Aaron. <laughs> this may be the end of Aaron and Dana for Revive Our Hearts. Surely not. <laughs> well, we could pick up a career in jazzercise if it was, I suppose. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to write that dog book. That sounds good. Well, you guys, being silly isn't exactly the main focus of this program or any of our other ones. You're right for that matter. And so far today, we haven't talked about anything profound. That is an understatement. Well, I don't know. (laughs) I now know that it might be a good idea to hang up fly paper if I ever do a video shoot in an unfamiliar studio. I think that's pretty wise advice. And you know what? Proverbs 17, 22 does say that a joyful heart is good medicine, but a crushed spirit dries up the bones. I was just talking with Ezzy, my five-year-old today, about how much fun God is. And I think he likes it Mm. when we enjoy our lives. Oh, I think that's so true. You know, our goal at Revive Our Hearts is to provide solid biblical teaching, and it is okay to have fun sometimes. I've had fun today, but we want to leave you with something you can think about, hold on to as you go about your day, because true joy is about more than laughing. It's not about just having fun. And maybe as we've had fun today, you thought, I wish I could laugh, but I'm hurting too much. Mm-hmm. It's hard to laugh when someone you love passes away or you have a prodigal. But when you can't laugh, you can still have joy. How? Nancy DeMoss Walgamuth talked about that in a series on Psalm 92. She's talking about verses 2 and 4. Let's listen. And the joy we're talking about is not rooted or grounded in what's going on around us, which may be painful, grievous, hard. So that's not the source of our joy. What is the source of our rejoicing and our joy? The source of our joy is in who God is, His faithful love, His steadfast love, His loving kindness, and His faithfulness. That word in the Hebrew means literally firmness. We waffle, we waver, we shift, we go up and down sometimes with our emotions or with how we're feeling, but God is firm. The word faithfulness means security, stability. He is a steady, faithful God. When we're up and down, He is steady. He is faithful. So who God is, this is a reason for joy, for rejoicing, and for celebrating the goodness of God. So in verse 2, we see a source of joy is who God is, but then we come to verse 4 and we find another source of our joy. You have made me rejoice, Lord, by what you have done. Verse 2, who you are causes me to have joy and rejoicing. Verse 4, what you have done makes me rejoice. I will shout for joy. Why? Because of the works of your hands. What you have done. First, who you are, and then what you have done. The works of your hands. Our God is a God 
who works. He worked from the very first pages of Scripture. Before there was time and heavens and earth, he was working. He is still working. He will be working for all of eternity. And the works of God should make us glad. They should be a cause for joy and rejoicing. And I just want to read here a a string of verses. We'll put the references in the transcript to today's program at reviveourhearts.com. But I want you to get a sense of how God works and what He does in His work, because this is supposed to make us joyful. This is supposed to make us rejoice. So we see in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God was creating. I think in the true sense of the word, we wouldn't use that word for anybody other than God because he made it ex nihilo, out of nothing. God worked. He made everything that is out of nothing. Anything we make just takes things God has made and makes something more out of them, brings them together, arranges them. But God is the one who created the heavens and the earth out of nothing. He was working in Genesis 1. In Genesis 2, verse 7, Then the Lord God formed the man out of the dust from the ground and breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and the man became a living being. God formed the man. God was working. He was shaping the man body and soul, making the man till he became a living being with the very breath of God in him. God was at work. And then going back to the last verse of Genesis chapter 1, God saw all that he had made, the work that he had done. He looked it over. He examined it. And it was very good indeed. The work of God is good. God works and what he makes is good. We see this theme running through all of scripture. Job chapter 5 verses 9 and 10 says that God does great and unsearchable things, wonders without number. Psalm 40 verse 5, many, O Lord my God, are your wonderful works which you have done. This is supposed to bring us joy, to make us rejoice. And your thoughts toward us cannot be recounted to you in order. If I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. The works of God. You may see God doing a few little things in your life and you think, but there's so much else going on here that's so many problems I'm facing. But the scripture says the works of God are numerous. They are wonderful. They are without number. You can't count if you tried all the things that God is doing in this world and on behalf of his people and for the salvation and redemption of this planet. You can't count how many works he is doing. God sent his precious son, Jesus, to this earth to do his works here on earth, the miracles, the healings, the words he spoke, the messages he gave. These are the works of God that Jesus came to bring to us in such a way that we could see the works of God in a new way. And then to bring about here through his crucifixion and his resurrection, the ultimate redeeming, saving works of God. And God continues to work now that Jesus has ascended into heaven. He is praying for us. We are down here on earth. And the scripture says in Philippians chapter 2, it is God who is today still continuing to work in you, both to will and to work according to his good purpose. God is still working. He's working in us so that we want to love him, to praise him, to follow him, to serve him, and to enable us to do his work according to his purpose for his glory in this world that he has created. That's Philippians 2, 13. This is the wellspring of true and lasting joy. To focus not on my works, but his. Not on what I have done, but on what he has done. How much do we often focus our our attention, our affections, our thinking on what others have done? the things that have blessed us, the things that have hurt us or harmed us or annoyed us, or on what we have done, our achievements, our accomplishments, or our failures. And we get so wrapped up in what others have done and what we have done, and we forget to think about, to meditate on, to reflect on what God has done. How magnificent are your works, Lord. How profound your thoughts. I want to encourage you to be alert to be tuned today to what God has done, to what God is doing all around you, to the works of his hands. Notice them. 
Think about them. Point them out to others. Are our thoughts trivial? Are they petty? Or are they profound and pure and rich and deep like God's thoughts? You want to have God's thoughts? Open his book. You read it. You meditate on it. You live in it. You soak in it. You steep in it like I put my tea bag in my cup in the morning and I let it steep. I let it soak in the hot water till what's in that tea bag gets infused into the water. That's what we want God's word to be doing in our hearts so that we will have his thoughts filling our minds. Our prayer is that our thoughts would align with his thoughts, that we would ponder his thoughts and his works, that we would be shaped by them, formed by them, sanctified by them, because we become what we think about. So if that's true, what are you becoming? What are you thinking about? Are you thinking about his magnificent works, his profound thoughts? And do those thoughts and those works of the Lord inspire you to worship to wonder, to awe, and to joy. Nancy DeMoss Wolgamuth. She's been reminding us that who God is and what He's done should fill us with a joy that goes beyond funny moments and happy memories. I have to confess that I sometimes start to lose my focus on God and focus instead on my hard circumstances. And when I do, I lose my joy in Him. Have you experienced that? The solution isn't distraction with movies, food, or friends, and it's not more busyness. It's simply to get in the Word, spend time with God, and meditate on who He is. Maybe go on a walk, enjoy His beautiful creation, thank Him for what He's done, and you'll start to see your trials in a new light. Now, they may not go away, but you can have joy in the midst of them. Sometimes I need a reminder, like Nancy gave today, to look to Christ, and you probably do too. Our goal here at Revive Our Hearts is to point women all over the world to who God is and what He's done. If you needed that reminder today, would you pray about helping us spread the message to even more women? Thanks to listeners like you, we're able to produce biblical content in 14 languages, and that number is always growing. If you want to help, get in touch with us at reviveourhearts.com. Or if you'd rather, you can call 1-800-569-5959. And when you give a gift of any amount, we'd love to send you a booklet. It's a 30-day devotional called Living Out the One Another's of Scripture. So when you give, you're helping us serve others, and you will be equipped to better serve the people you interact with face-to-face. Again, go to reviveourhearts.com to donate. And when you do, be sure to ask for your copy of Living Out the One and Others of Scripture. Oh, and Aaron, you know more about the Revive Our Hearts products than I do. While I'm at the website, can I order one of those bobblehead Nancys? <laughs> you forgot. Those are one of the things we are not going oh, to do. Oh, right. That's really too bad, honestly. <laughs> okay. So maybe you can't get that, but come back next week because we have something way better. Nancy Damas Walgamuth, Hunter Bless, Laura Wiffler, and I will talk about what it means to be fruitful. I'll give you a hint. It's more than just worldly success. Thanks for listening today. I'm Dana Gresh. We'll see you next time for Revive Our Hearts Weekend. This program is a listener-supported production of Revive Our Hearts in Niles, Michigan, calling women to freedom, fullness, and fruitfulness in Christ.